Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my RHCSA practice session series where I'm not necessarily trying to give authoritative information as much as I'm going through objectives as if I was preparing for them for the RHCSA exam. This video is going to cover some objectives within the Manage Containers objective group. I'm not going to do a separate video for every objective within the containers group because there are several that um, that work well together, such as the objectives for this video, which is going to be find and retrieve container images from a remote registry and inspect container images. Before we dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video and also want to invite everyone, if you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Without further ado, let's jump into managing containers with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about the scope of this video and the others that I'm going to make about the Manage Containers objectives for the RHCSA exam. If you're looking for a video that is a tutorial on containers themselves, as far as learning use cases for them, um, learning more advanced management techniques for containers, learning more advanced deployment techniques for containers, learning how to create containers, this is not going to be the video or the videos for you. What I'm doing is specifically looking at the objectives for the RHCSA exam and going through what I would do if I was still preparing for that exam to be able to cover these objectives. I've since passed the RHCSA exam and since passing the exam they have added the objectives about containers. Also, I want to mention that I myself am not a master of containers. I'm becoming more familiar with the technology. It's simply not something that I've had to work with um, day in and day out with my other IT duties. But I think that works well for the scope of what RHCSA is looking for. From what I remember when I uh, took the exam before these objectives were, were made, the exam is expecting you to, to know what, what the objectives are about. If there are tools that are associated with the objectives, you have to know how to use them and know how to look up um, options and such if you need to do some t type of specialized task, but they're not looking for deep mastery. So again, if you're looking for what to prepare or not necessarily what to prepare, but how to prepare for the RHCSA for these objectives, this, this video might be helpful for you. But if you're looking for a specific tutorial on containers themselves, then this is not the video for you. So with that out of the way, let's get started with find and retrieve container images from a remote registry. The first thing you're going to need are the actual tools to do this. And the tools we're going to be using are Podman and Scopeo. I don't know if you'll have the tools already available for you on, on the exam, but it's a good idea to, to know how to install them in, in, in case they, they are not there. Now you can install the individual tools, Podman and Scopeo, but what I would probably suggest is that you use the module for container tools. And so here I'm in my um, CentOS stream VM. And to install this, I will simply do sudo yum. You can also use DNF as well module install container tools feed it the password i got it on the first try that means this is going to be a good video right you could also have done the dash y flag to skip the part where it's actually installing the packages so the installation process is complete. Before we dive into searching for containers and such, there is something I want to bring your, to your attention. Once you install these tools, there will be a directory added to Etsy. Let me CD into Etsy. And that directory is going to be the containers directory. And within containers, you will have registries.conf. And this registries.conf is where you're going to have the different repositories configured that Podman and other tools would have um, access to, to, to be able to search. Now, there may be some more fine grain information about that, which I'm sure that, that you would be able to find documentation for. But from my understanding, what, where I am in my, my journey of learning this, that's what I understand the registries.conf to include. 
So I'm going to VI into that. We're not going to make any changes, but I just want to take a look at one thing in particular here. There's lots of comments in this document that, that can give you specific information. But what I want to show you are the default registries that are available. And the first is registry.access.redhat.com. This is something that's publicly available. Anyone can um, get images from it. Also, it includes docker.io. The registry.redhat.io is, is a special repository. You have to have credentials to be able to use that. I happen to have credentials for that. And where I have the credentials from are from being a part of the Red Hat developer network, which um, was free to join. I imagine this is still uh, free to join now. You can actually do that and, and have a, uh, a real copy of RHEL to be able to do testing and, and practice on and such. So I'm not going to use that registry with this particular video just because everything that we need to do, we can get from the other two, but just know that you would need to have a, an account with Red Hat to be able to use the registry.redhat.io. We'll clear our screen. And the first thing we're going to do is ser search for some images. And there's a particular image called UBI, which is Universal Base Image. So what we can do, we'll do Podman, search, and we're just going to search for UBI. And this is going to return um, standard output, so I'm going to pipe it to less. We'll take a look at what comes out. And we have the image from registry.redhat.access, I'm sorry, registry.access.redhat.com. And if I were to page down, you'll see similar from the registry.redhat.io. And eventually you will see that from um, docker.io as well. Actually, I'm not sure if the UBI image is in Docker. There are other things that have matched UBI as far as the, um, the, the string, the actual UBI rel images are going to be from uh, Red Hat's repository. So you can do this with a variety of terms. Let's say that you are looking for an image, Podmean, Podman, you're looking for an image that works with Apache or, or that would uh, run the, the, the service Apache. And here we have one of the first ones that comes up is HTTPD 2.4 or it's version 2.4, but, but dash 24 here, rel 7. And there are some others as well. There are things that have PHP, things that have Perl. But you get the idea. If you're on the exam and you needed to search for a, a, a particular image type, this is what you would do. Now, before I go on, I want to talk a little bit about the man pages for Podman. And if I were to just do man Podman, there's not a whole lot of information in this. What I want to turn your attention to are the, the command section. When I did that Podman space search space um, the the search term really from what I understand I'm doing this podman dash um, search command all right we can put that to the test I'm actually quite curious podman search Apache less let's see if I'm right about that Ah, bash podman search not found. Hmm. Well, I was incorrect about that. I, the beauty of doing live videos, right? You stand corrected. But the point that I was going to get to as far as if you wanted to get various options for searching within podman, you would search the man pages for podman search rather than do podman dash search a, a, as a command. I remember when I was first doing some testing with this, and I'm like, the man page isn't telling me much, but then I realized you can man podman dash search, podman dash pull, whatever the different commands within podman that you're doing, that's where you would go to get your information. So now we're gonna pull down an image, which is making a copy of it on our local system. Before I do that, I'm going to search for the UBI cause I'm going to cheat. And by cheat, I mean, I'm going to use copy and paste. We simply do podman pull and the image. That'll take just a moment and it will pull down all of the necessary data to be able to have the um, universal base image for universal base image eight, which is the rel eight universal base image. That took a few seconds to do, but now we have it. And to be able to see the images that you have pulled, you can use the podman images command. And that will do that. Podman image is a separate command that, that, that will do something different. But to list your images, you can do the podman images. 
Now, if you wanted to remove this image, we would do podman rm I remove images and then we can do dash a which would blow away everything or we can give it the image name since we only have the one we'll just do dash a and if I were to look at podman images now nothing is is returned now we'll look at inspecting container images as far as that particular objective and I'm going to show you this kind of in the, uh, the story of troubleshooting. So one of the things that I was doing with some of my own practice with this was trying to get a basic image running that is running Apache. Just because as you have seen with, with many of my, my other videos for the RHCSA practice sessions, I like using Apache kind of as the, the, the testing grounds. Very easy service to configure, very easy to check and, and see if it's running. So I figured we'll use that for containers. And there's a command that, that you will do, which we, we won't look at in this particular video because it's outside of the scope of these two objectives. But there's a command that you do that basically will map a port on your local system to a port that's in your container. And you would use that to be able to get whatever web pages are being served up by your container. And so I'm thinking I should use port 80. That, that, that would make sense. You know, good old port 80 is what we use on, on web servers and just stuff was, was, was not working. And so using the ability to in, in inspect a container, even though from what I gather, um, this inspection is really kind of a low level thing. It gave me enough of a clue to be able to figure out what I needed to do for my command. So the command that we we'll use to inspect containers is Scopio. And what we'll do is Scopio or Scopeo, I think I've said it both ways, inspect. And we're going to inspect the image that is in the remote repository. So we'll do docker colon slash slash. And actually, that's not the image I want. Let me search for the HTTPD image again. All right, so we now have that rel7 image. So we'll do scopio inspect docker the image name and I'm going to pipe this to less as well. So a lot of information that that comes with this most of it is not significant to, to what I'm trying to do, nor do I think it's super significant for the exam, because again, this is just kind of a high level overview of how to use these tools. But the thing that helped me figure out what um, port to do the mapping for was this line here, where this image is actually gonna be using port 8080 for HTTPD and eight, I'm sorry, for HTTP and 84.43 for HTTPS. So even though I don't know 100%, you know, exactly what all of this information here means, this was enough of a clue f for me to figure out um, what I needed to configure for a different command to be able to have access to the web page served up by a container that has Apache running on it. So for these two objectives, I think that pretty much covers it as far as a simple, you know, find and, and retrieve container images. You simply can do that with podman search and podman pull. And then to inspect the container images to get some information about them, the Scopio inspect command will be perfectly fine with that. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you click like. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And once you click that subscribe button, ring the bell so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Thanks for taking the time to watch again, and I will see you the next time.